If you feel that your security requirements aren't being met by sort of the standard security features that we've discussed, such as operating system security, file permissions, strong passwords, firewalls, all of that kind of stuff, then you might want to investigate kicking things up a little bit, if you will, uh, by using encryption and certificates. Now, with encryption, there is a utility known as OpenSSL, which is used to create server and client certificates. Now, for starters, SSL is Secure Sockets Layer, and it's the standard protocol that's used in secure web transactions. If you've ever gone to do online banking or made a credit card purchase uh, over the internet, you're using SSL. And the basis behind it is that it uses certificates on both the server and the client to verify the identity of those systems. Now, Open SSL very much like MySQL, is, of course, an open source implementation of this, meaning that you don't have to purchase a publicly trusted internet certificate. You can, that's perfectly fine, but you do have to pay for that. Uh, and, and that, of course, enables you to, to do secure internet transactions. If you aren't concerned with internet transactions, then you just, you don't need that. If you're only concerned with securing your internal systems, Open SSL can absolutely do this. So what you're what you're doing is saying that this server in our environment can be trusted. And then you install the certificates on the clients that are accessing the server, and then the server trusts those clients. So it's just validating the identity of the systems that you feel are trustworthy. Any other systems that might show up in your environment, such as a visiting client, uh, would not have a certificate. So the, the server will not trust the communications of that particular system. Now, the other component uh, of using SSL, once you install the OpenSSL library, is making use of encryption. And encryption is achieved by using what's known as a public private key pair. This is the basis of SSL transactions. So the certificate is responsible for identifying the system. So again, it's authentication. Prove to me that you are the system that you claim to be. The certificate does that, but it does not provide the security of the data itself. That's where the encryption comes in, and that's accomplished with this private, uh, public and private key pair. So there are two keys. The private key is installed on the server and is held securely on the server and only on the server. The public key can be, as the name indicates, distributed to the public. So any client system can receive a public key. What then happens is that these keys simply represent encryption algorithms that can be used. So the public key is used to encrypt any and all requests from the server. So they can be secured and submitted to the server. The private key that's held on the server is the only thing that is capable of decrypting those requests. So this way, if another client intercepts the request of a client, they don't have the private key and therefore they cannot access that request. Only the private key is capable of decrypting the request that was encrypted by the public. Now that's a little bit simplified. There's a little bit more going on behind the scenes, but that is the basis of it. Anything that is encrypted with the public can only be decrypted with the private and the private is only held on the server. So it basically secures the communications that are running around between client and server. So that again, if intercepted, another client cannot decrypt it and open it up and see what's in there. So this creates secured environments wherein not only are you authenticating the systems themselves, proving that they are valid systems, but you're also encrypting the communications that are happening between them. So you get double security, if you will. 
And in higher security environments, you very often find this. Now, as mentioned earlier, this is only for internal security, uh, but you can absolutely kick this up to external as well by implementing publicly trusted certificates wherein a third party will investigate you and uh, assign you a certificate as long as you, quote, pass their investigations from that point then the internet trusts you as well and it does still use the same private and public key key pair to ensure those transactions over the internet that's up to you as to whether or not you need that but uh, open ssl can accomplish this internal security so that you you know you're just a little more secured it prevents untrusted systems and even those who are trusted are communicating in encrypted fashion, so everything is much more secure.